Hi everyone, today we're going to try doing some painting videos this time. Yep. And I'm going to do Cthulhu from Zombicide 2nd Edition. I primed it in white and I was going to do it with contrast paint, but I figured it would be a little bit cloudy. So I started with this model color Vallejo Reflective Green. Yep. So that's what start and I that's my first paint and I'm going to do the whole model in that color first. Yep. And then, Raven, you're doing... I'm doing Murgo's chief attendant. There's four of them. So I will be I will be batch painting the four of them. And that's just that's just the first one. In the from handle. Bloodborne. Yeah, from Bloodborne. So how we're going to do it is I'll do some of my one and do your one. And we'll show you the progress of doing it. Yep. So I finished with the reflective green. I just did the whole model like that. Yep. Base. And I was debating about using a wash to chili violet on those or not, but I'm going to use demonite hide on the membranes on the wings on those. And then I might do the same thing on the little tentacles there. Okay. So. I'm going to show see. the picture. Yeah. The... Again, just so people know. There you go. Yeah. And then I might, for the head there that has the purple, I might, that's where I'll put your chili while I over the green and then see. Yeah. Because I'm not the best at wet blending. There's probably other ways you can do it if you can wet blend it or use even dry contrast, but I haven't really got that much experience using contrast blending into them. So, but I'm going to use just the purple on the membranes there. And then when that's dry, I'll probably put two chili over the purple there too. And then some of the other models. And you got yours there done? Yeah. So we did the granite steel base first cool. on the chest plate and that's like a little, a little blue tinge to it right yep well like we're trying to do it kind of like the card not exactly like the card but kind of like the card so next i'm going to do the chain mail which is a bit of a darker metal okay. so i chose uh vallejo acrylic metal acrylic metal color in burnt iron yeah. which you can see I think it's an airbrush paint but it's, it's has good coverage it's a little watery too but yeah so we're going to try that out on the chain mail and see how that works okay so, because we know it's a little watery, we'll be careful. I don't think you've used that yet. I use it a lot for the undead stuff. Nope, I have not used it yet. So I'll just get a little bit on the palette. I don't even really water that one down, really, because it's so watery. It's because it's, it's airbrush paint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty watery. So. And you're just going to do the yeah. chain mail like that we'll color, just right? just do the chain mail in that darker color. And then it'll get darker again when I wash the whole model with Nuln Oil, which will fit with the the whole Bloodborne vibe. Because stuff's pretty dark in Bloodborne. So we're not making anything, you know, pink with rainbows or anything. Cool. So then we'll see what that looks like when it's done. Yeah. So I did the Demonite hide on the membranes and the wings. And on the tentacles and the little wounds he has too. Yep. In the back. Looks good. I also did, for some of the green that was a little light, I... Did a second coat on it a little bit too. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Valkyrie Yellow for his uh, little horns there on his wings. Yep. And for his thumbnails on his feet to make it look a little yellow and dirty and stuff. Okay. So that's the next step I'm going to do. Sounds good. Okay. So we did the dark chain mail. Mm -hmm. You can see. Yes. Nice. The dark chain mail and now we're going to work on there's some tattered fabric pieces around its waist okay we're going to do those in carac stone from citadel yep and that will be yeah that'll be next yeah i like the the dark metal has it opposed to the blue one that yeah it gives it a, night, a looks nice cool with a little blue tinge is it yeah and it, it gets it it's close to the card but it's not identical yeah which is good and the Karak stone works good for uh, skeleton bone, too. I use it a little bit for that, too. But it works for leathers, too. Yeah. And it's it's nice for uh, if you were looking for a base for a dirty, like a dirty white fabric, it works really well for that, too. Cool. So then you're going to do that up, so. and we'll see what they look like when they're done. Yeah. So I put the yellow on the horns on his wings and then his fingers and toes. Yep. And then I'm going to do the white in the eyes because they're just all white in there. Are they black? They have a little black in there first. So, so I'm going to put the black in his eyes. 
and then put the white in it afterwards. So okay. And I'm using Vallejo black for it. Yeah. So. Just the black in there now. Yep. And I'll let that dry quickly. So then I'm going to, I use this for the basing sometimes too, especially if I'm going to put rocks or stuff on it. The contrast paint works pretty good. For covered for just covering the white primer. Yeah. So I'll just take my wash brush and just cover the base with a contrast paint. I don't have to be too perfect with it because I'm gonna put grass or tufts and stuff on it anyway yeah you don't want to slap it on too much but you don't want nope. to, you don't have to be too perfect yep i'm not gonna worry too much about the feet i can just touch them up afterwards right yeah and a little mud between the toes isn't so terrible anyway yep so i still don't know how i might base it yet i might put some algae or stuff on it make it look like it came from a swamp or something yeah that's a good idea. So that was the Saigor Blonde I used just to cover the base. Yep. And now I'll take the white, the silver gray I'm using for Vallejo for the inside of the eyes. Okay. And how big it is that? Yep, it's just all white in there, so. I'm not even using a really fine tip brush for it. If I have to touch it up later, I can. For the eyes? Yeah, because my brush is kind of crap anyway. But I'm just doing the basing anyway. Yep. And his eyes. There he is so far. Looks Four good. It's done. I don't think I can do more fine details when I after I wash it. So I'm going to put a wash on it next too. Okay. And I'll do that next. So we've got the tattered fabric color on there now. And next we're going to move on to, there's a little bit of exposed flesh in the hands that you can see. And the feet are bare. So, oh, I didn't even know the feet are bare too, right? Yeah, you can't see the feet on the card, but you can see the hands a little bit. They look a little bit bluish and tinged. So I'm going to start with Deepkin Flesh, which is kind of a, a, a pale creamier. white color. Yeah. That I'm gonna start with on the flesh, and, and then you might wash use them with the Drachnoff, right? Yeah, blue, right? Wash them with the the blue color to give them that that. Yeah. Or another way you could do it too is the blue gray. Sometimes I do it that way too. That way you don't even have to wash it. That's another way you can get the blue too from yeah. Vallejo. But we'll see the way you're gonna do it too. Yeah. Okay. So now that I have the base done on them, I'm gonna use some washing. On them, yeah. So I'm gonna use Citadel Juchi Violet on all the purple parts and the little sores on them and stuff. Yep. And after that's done, I'll put the camo shade on it, make them look like a little dirtier green. Yeah. So it came from the swamp too. Yeah, we use that camo shade for a few things. Yeah, especially for the um, lots of the zombies we've done, I've used the camo shade instead of agrass too, because it's more of like a greenish tinge to the skin. Yeah. So I'll just put some of the do chili. Over the wings. Just being a little careful not to hit any of the green. It's okay if you do a bit anyway. But let's put the chili on the wings. I'll do that more. And then chili over all these little sores too. It's okay if it hits the outside of the greens because you can always touch it up. So I'll hit all those with the chili. Same with the tentacles too. Yep. So I'll do more of that and show you afterwards. And then the other one close it, close it, will be the camel shade. Always make sure you shake your washes. But but <laughs> keep make sure the lid is closed. Yeah. Very important. I've seen someone explode one all over themselves before. That was funny. Mm -hmm. but, and I'll just hit all the green. 
with the camo shade. So it gives it, instead of doing non-oil, because I don't want it to be super dark, I just want them to look kind of grungy and dirty. Yep. So I'll do the camo shade. Just all over the green. Yep. So when it's done, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done being washed. Awesome. Okay, so we have the whitish color on the flesh now, on the feet and on the hands. That looks good. And we're going to move on to some brown. I have two different colors of brown because I have two different spots that are going to need brown. The handle okay. on the weapon is going to be wood, so that's going to be brown. And then there's a little underskirt, I don't know if you can see it, under the bottom layer of chainmail that I'm going to paint brown. And of course, I personally paint all of my bases dark brown, so it blends in when you're putting grass and tufts and stuff. Even if you're doing, what about if you're doing like water on the base or other stuff? Too? I don't usually do water on the base, oh, okay. so I haven't done blue or anything. But okay. For regular, my I don't want to say regular, but for just general basing that has grass and dirt and stuff, I always paint them brown. Okay. Just to so everything blends well. But we're going to be working with more fang, which I'm going to do for the underskirt uh, from Citadel and Green Stuff World. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a name on it. I think that's Quicksilver Brown. It's yeah, it rubbed off because we use it a lot. It's going to be the the. Is a number on it? Uh, sort of. <laughs> no. Okay. okay. Yeah, I believe that way. It came in a set with those Green Stuff World ones. Okay, so that's going to be the wood color. Yeah, and you're also. Those are the other ones you're batch painting, right? Yeah. You're always I'm faster batch at batch painting than I am. So you keep... <laughs> okay, know. so you're going to do those browns? Yep. And then we'll see what it looks like when it's done? Yep. So, Kasulu's based in the West now. So, I think I don't, didn't think I said it, but I did use the Juchili Violet on the top of his head, so it kind of looks like the picture. And then when it was still a little bit wet, I mixed it with the camel shade on the top of the head. So yep. there's camel shade all on the skin, and then the to chili on the purples. Yeah. So he's based in Lost now. Awesome. So he'd be ready to play on the table if you don't want to do any highlights or anything on it. But, yeah, but we're going to do some highlights. Yeah. So what I do, I, some people might skip that step, but I want to go up and touch it up. So I'm going to take the same paint I started with, with the refractive green, and just go over all the raised levels of the green that's on there. Yeah. And then, because I keep the same paints that I use in order, so I know what to do, on the highlight of that, I'll do... Olive green. Yep. And then the final layer highlight, I'll do the high highlights on it. I'll yep. do golden olive. Cool. Away. So I'll show what that looks like when it's done. Yeah. Okay. So I did the touch up with the reflective green on them. I left some places that weren't raised still a little dirty because I want them to look more dirty. Yeah. If I wanted to be more clean, I'd do a little bit more. Of the raised parts. Yeah. But I've done with reflective. And then I'm going to do on more of the raised edges, I'm going to layer up some. So like also on the, like on the veins on the arm. Yep. So I'll just, just where light would hit or some of the raised parts, I'll put down there. Yeah. And then I'll have to go back and go like over, like even on the outside of the swords a bit, maybe. And there, the vein here. So I'll go back and do the layers on all these parts that are a little bit raised where you would sink light with it. You wouldn't put it maybe on there where his butt is or anything because then it's in the dark, right? Yeah. So there wouldn't be any light hitting that. It has to just be where the light would hit. Yep. Yeah. And that color that I'm doing is olive green. So that's the next step I'm going to do for it. And then once that's done, I'll do the very edge highlights with golden. Okay. Okay. So we've done the browns. Okay. We have a little skirt in there and the handle with the wood. And the base is brown now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some wash. Okay. So I'm going to use Drakenoff Nightshade on the skin to okay. give it... The slightly blue tinge that I'm looking for. Okay. And then I'm going to use non oil to darken everything up and the so metals and everything. Get yeah. in the recesses. So stuff, stuff goes in the recesses to make it stand out more for when I'm getting ready to do highlights. I won't do super high highlights on this one, but 
we'll do some just to make it pop. Okay. So that'll be next. Okay. Okay. So I'm finished with my wash. As you can see, the arms and the feet now have a blue tinge to them from using the Draken off. Mm -hmm. And I also did null oil on everything else. I did a lighter null oil wash because I didn't want it to get too cloudy on the lighter colored fabric. So uh, now I'm going to bring, start bringing it back up and I'm going to start, go back in with the Grey Knight steel on the chest plate and the face to, to bring it up and hopefully bring back that blue tinge that the metal has. Cool. So, so I did the highlight with the olive green Vallejo. Color. Yep. So all those veins and some of the edges have highlights on them. Yeah. Not going too crazy because I want them to be a little darker and more muddied up a little bit. Yeah. And then the last one for maybe the very edges of stuff, I'll use... Oh, that's the same one. We'll use golden olive. Yeah. Make some of the little bits pop. So. It's good to... Especially on the final highlights. I don't water my paint up enough, but on the... Very edge highlights, it's good to water it down because you don't want it to look too thick on the very edges. Yep. So. So, very edges, of, like on the vein here, I just do the very edge of it just to give it a little bit more definition. Around the eyes, maybe two up there. And around the little sores in the edges there a little bit too. You don't got to go crazy with it. Yeah, this is some muscles, some veins down there too. So I'll go back and do some of the edges where the light would hit. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So I highlighted up the green now with the golden olive. Yep. So all the greens highlighted up. Yep, looks nice. So now that those are done, I have... The black here that I did for the inside of the eyes. And then I have the white for the pupils that were inside. And it's only a solid white they have in the picture. So I'm going to do the same. I'm not going to do anything else in there. Okay. So if I needed to do the black for any touch-ups, I go back and do a little bit of black on the inside of the eyes if I need to clean it up. I'll just go around the eye here because there is white that was touching the green. Clean it up a bit. And that looks good there. So just a little touch-up there with the black. And for the pupils, if you want them to be glossy, I would use another glossy paint like uh, Vallejo or Citadel. Or if you want them to be a more dull white, I'd use Scale 75 or a flat white for the inside of the eyes. Especially if you're doing pupils, it's better to do a flat white in there because then it's easier to work with and a shiny white on the eye too. Yeah. And especially if you're going to add color or anything. And this is the same one. This is Silver Glaze. So I'm just... Touching up the white a bit. So now the eyes are done. Awesome. If you want it to be more creepy, you could put white in there, uh, yellow in there or something too. Yeah. And then the yellow that we did for the dirty looking nails. And I'll put it over there by the white. I'll use that same white later I did for the eyes to mix in with this yellow for a highlight. So I'm just going to do the Valkyrie yellow on the horns and the nails. Only on the ones that you can see in the light. The ones that are in the dark, I won't highlight back up. Right. These ones here. It's okay if they're a little dirty because he's dirty anyway. Yeah. There we go. And then for the highlight, I'll just take that white I had for the eyes and mix it with the yellow to lighten it up a bit. I don't have to paint on my palette, but it doesn't matter if it's 50-50 or anything. I'm just, just lightening up a bit. Yeah. Brightening it up. And on the edges of the horns and the nails, I'll just put that there. Turn your hand a little bit. Perfect. There. 
Another thing you could do is if you wanted to do wash like agras or shade or sepia is a little yellow, sepia right? too. You could just put it on the tips of it to make it look seraphin sepia. Seraphin sepia yeah, on the edges too. Yeah. Of the nails. Not to worry too much about the feet too, because if you're putting grass or gravel, it's okay if it covers it a little bit too. Yeah. And then that's a little details there. And then I just gotta move on to the yep on to the purple membranes and stuff. So we'll do that on the next step. Okay. Because I'm gonna do demonite hide again on everything to bring it back up. Yeah. And then on the tentacles, I'm gonna use these purples, and then on the membranes, I'm gonna use these purples. And the next one and i might mix it with skin we'll see but i'll show you that on the next level of it so we've gone over back back over the the chest plate and the the mask and a little bit on the blade and the chain here with the granite steel that looks nice now bring back a little bit of the blue tint to it mm -hmm. and now we're going to do the same thing with the vallejo burnt iron on the chain mail to give it a little bit more just a little bit more. Yeah, where the light would hit on the middle too to reflect yeah. it a bit. Yeah, just so it has a bit of a a bit of a shine to it. Nothing too major, but a bit of a shine to it. Nice. So that's the next step, and then we'll be moving on to the tattered fabric. So I took the demonite hide. Yep. And I went over all the purple that got washed with your chili. So all the tentacles and the membranes, the front and back, and all the little sores too. Nice. To bring those back up. And then now for the tentacle part, I'm going to use Warpfield Gray okay. for a highlight and Slaness Gray for the last highlight. Okay. So I'll just go back. This is with Warpfield Gray, just on the little edges of the tentacles to give them a little bit more definition. And on like the edges of the sores too. There, I'm going to do a different color of purple or a different shade of purple on the membranes. Yep. Make them a little brighter. So I'll do that for our, all those. And then, so we still. So that's gray as a final highlight, just on the very edges on top of the warp field gray, just where the edges where the light would hit. So in there a little bit. And the edge of the tentacles too. And then once that's done, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So we've gone and done the next layer of uh, burnt iron on top of the chain mail. Gives it a little bit of a shine, which is nice in some spots where the light would hit. Cool. And now we're going to move on to the tattered fabric, which I'm going to go back over in certain spots, mostly the raised bits with Carrick stone. So I finished up doing the highlights of the warp field gray on the tentacles and the sores on his backs in front there. Yeah, that looks nice. And then the warp field gray was the other one. So that's gray, sorry, was the other one. Yeah. The final highlights. Nice. And then those are done. And then for the last, I just got to do the membranes on the wings. And I'm going to use, I'm going to bring it up a little bit darker in the recesses with purple shadow. Yeah, it's a nice color. Yeah. And then I'm going to highlight the purple shadow up with cold flesh. I don't know if I'm going to mix it. I'll see how bright it is. Okay. On the highlights of it. And if I want, if I might try it, I might mix it with some of the base flesh too to give it kind of like that fleshy look. I'll see how would I, if I want to make it look like that, or I'll just do it with those two paints. Okay, cool. And then once that's done, we'll be ready to do the basin on it. Cool. So we did some layer on the tattered fabric, brought it back up with some Carrick stone, which was the original color. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to move on to the browns. So I'm going to do the little bit of brown that's here on the handle and the little bit of brown that's on the bottom here. And that'll be the next step before the fleshy bits. Oh, you still have the flesh to finish up too? Yes. Okay, cool. So I finished up the membranes now on the wings and I did the purple shadow on 
to darken it up in the recesses a bit. Yep, looks nice. And then I did 50-50 mix with the cold flesh to do some of the highlights on there too. Yep. And the inside of the little gaps and damaged wings. And then the final edge highlight for like some of the edges there. I just went to the cold right. flesh. Looks nice. And then for the basing, I took some army, I think it's an army painter. Yeah, army painter, grass, and brown battleground. Yep. And then I take these little Tupperware containers, use them, mix them together. Yeah. In there. Like that. And that's what the basing is on there. Nice. And then these are tufts. I believe they're Green Stuff World tufts. Yeah. For the so. neon little tufts. Yeah. And that's what's on that. They look cool. Yeah. And I used to glue the tufts. I just used plastic glue and then just school glue to put the mixture on. Yeah, white glue. And then because our abominations all have the same rim color. Yeah. I just used a gray. We use gray for the rim color, so that's what the gray is. Yeah, looks good. Came together nicely. And then now for the final tufts, I do the effects at the end. I want the tentacles to kind of look gooey and slimy. Yeah. So I'm gonna get this green stuff world vomit and put it on the tentacles. Sounds good. And then Typhus Corrosion, I use it as dirt effects too, especially for the zombies to make them look like they've been splashed with mud and stuff. Yep, we also used it recently on some uh, uh, construction machinery to make it yeah. look dirty. So I'll use that and I'll show you how to do the effect where I blow on the straw and then it makes it look like it splashes. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the Blood for the Blood God too, to make his hand look all bloody. Yeah. So I'll show you that and a trick of making it look like there's goo or gore coming across the fingers. Sounds good. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Yeah. So I took the vomit green stuff world. That's what this little goo is here. Yeah, it's definitely a nasty vomit like It's kind of like Nurgle's Rot from Citadel Paint, but... A little bit more brown. Yeah, so I'm just going to put it on my crap brush here and put it across some of the tentacles. Make it look kind of gooey. Yeah. It, when it dries, it has like a little sheen to it too. Yeah, and it keeps that sort of bile color right yeah it's also good for putting from i've done it from some of the other zombie side stuff i might do that on one of these two of it too on the like where's this oh i know he's a cut on the back on his butt here so if you want to make it look like there's stuff coming up from wounds if you don't want to do blood from stuff you can just put a little a little bit of goo goo coming out from some of the wounds and stuff yeah, i think we've done that on some of them coming out of some of the mouths of the yeah some, especially the fatties i put the yeah Either the bile or the vomit on it. Yeah. So I'll let that die. I could, if I wanted to, use the same effect with the straw and blow on it, but I'm just going to put it on there like that. Yeah. So that's on there. So then the next is the typhus corrosion. Okay. So this, I'm going to splash some of the mud on them. So I just take my crappy brush here and my little murder box or effect box with you. Yep. So I'll take my straw. And I want the feet to look dirty, so I'll just go close to the straw and just do a burst of air in it. I might put a little bit more on this brush here. And there's no right or wrong way to do this, it's just look how draw that comes. So I'll just blow onto it. The closer you get, it's got off, you're going to make a pool that way. So if you go far away, it would spread more. Make it go up his legs, wherever you want. You would sink where the splash of the mud would go. And then let me hit it under the light. Don't even see it yet. He's got some dirt. Some dirt splashed up over that way. Yep. And if you wanted to take your brush and without the fact where you would sink somewhere to hit that you missed with a splash, you could just put some there. Yeah. On some of his feet here like that. And then it's the same thing with the blood for the blood god. Just put a nice glow glob of it on your brush yep. and it's where you want the blood effect where you think the heck would come from so the direction it, where the the impact was yeah so i'm going to do it on his hand here a little bit farther away and just do a burst of air again already you can see it splattered on his hand there yep and i'm going to turn him around do a little bit on the bottom 
again, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just how the effect will look. Yeah, trial and error, right? Yeah. Always remember, like I do with this effect box too, to do that too, because you don't have other models around. Because I've painted models before, and there's little specks of blood on it, and you realize I've hit the other models behind it. Yeah. And trying to get the blood off if you don't want it there isn't fun. No. So. And then yeah, I got a little mess on the base. You can always go back over with the gray, or if it's still wet, I just lick my finger and take the blood effect off. Yep. Just make sure you don't stick your finger back in your mouth. <laughs> yep. So that's uh splatter of blood on there and now if you can go you can put it wherever you want you can put it on his other hand i'm just going to make it look like he swatted someone with his hand yeah so that's there and the other effect i forget where i learned this trick from where's my glue so always make sure when you do this i've learned from doing this many times that your palette is clean because if you do this trick with your palette with paint on it the alcohol and chemicals in the glue are mixed with the blood and it's going to look weird Right. So that's a very important. Point. Yeah, I've done it a couple times, and then I wonder, well, why does my blood on there look like it's green or brown? But it's because it the alcohol and the glue melted the... melted and mixed with it. Yeah. So I take some of the blood for the blood god and put it on my palette, and then I take the plastic glue, and there's no, you can say fifty fifty. I just do a few dabs of it. No exact science to it. Yeah. Into the blood for the blood god. No. Is, is there a certain texture you're looking for once it's mixed up? Uh, whatever you think you want it to look. If you want it to look chunky and gooey, I would put more glue in it. Okay. If you want it to be not as chunky, don't put as much glue. You just want to mix it with... Oh, and I use a... I did the long end too. Uh, a paper clip. And it makes sure it's the same thing with the palette that there's no paint on your or even the coating on the paper clip because yeah. that would go into the effect too. Right. And make it look weird. So I'm just still mixing this up and see how it's chunking up. Yep. So then I'll just pick it up with my Q-tip. Not Q-tip, a uh, paper clip. <laughs> and then dab where you want the start the effect to happen. So I'll put it on here. And you'll see because the glue's in it, you can stretch it. Cool. And bring it across. So it Neat. looks like he has gore or yeah. effect, right? And you can put that wherever you... Some people I know before an old trick was you would put hair and put the same that way. But I don't know how to do that way. And I've been used to doing it this way. So then just dab where you want it to start. And it's slowly. If you do it fast, you'll rip it. Yeah. So just slow. It's like core there. And, and then we'll just gotta, pardon? And you gotta be careful with it too because it's delicate, right? Yeah. I find once once I varnish it, it hardens a bit. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So then the last one here, I'll make it connect here. I've sometimes I try to get it onto the base, or if you have rocks or stuff there, you can bring it down to the base. And then it looks like he has gore and stuff on him, right? Awesome. That looks fantastic. Uh, you can do that same trick with the vomit. So if you want uh, to make it look like he had bile or weird strings of crap and stuff coming from his tentacles, you could do the same effect and just add glue to the vomit and you could bring it down across the tentacles to make it look like he has yeah. yuck and stuff coming from there. Cool. And then you'd be done. So the last step would be to varnish it. So because I want him to look a little like he walked out of water or he's shiny, yeah. I'm not going to use a matte varnish. I'm going to use a semi-gloss. Because yeah. if you use a gloss varnish, he'd look too shiny. He'd be like Iron Kasulu. Yeah. Like, he'd be Way weird. shiny. Yeah. So I'm going to use a semi-gloss. And in a picture, I'll show you what he looks like. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we've finished. Well, I finished the browns. I did more brown on the handle and then added a little bit of a highlight to the underskirt brown you can't see very much of it anyway so it wasn't a huge highlight and now i'm gonna work on the a little bit of flesh which is the hands and the feet and i'm gonna go over what i have there with a slightly thinner layer of deep kim flesh because i still want the blue to show a little bit are you gonna do a highlight more than the deep kim flesh or just the deep kim flesh um not sure. I'm going to see how it looks after I put on Okay, the and then flesh. if we do, we'll just put, show the paint that we used. For yeah, it. if I add another, I'll just show the paint when I, well, that I use afterwards. But um, yeah, because like I said before, 
I, Bloodborne's pretty dark, so I don't want, I'm not going to do super bright highlights, but we'll see. So right now we're going to go at it with some decomplexion. All right, so we've done the other layer on the fleshy bits. You can see they're still a little bit blue, not mm -hmm. super blue. And now we're going to move on to the basing. Okay. So we have a specific mixture that we use for our, our Bloodborne bases. We use a little bit of uh, Army Painter Brown Battleground and lovely mystery bag of black. <laughs> black coal. Coal type. Great. Got from a hobby store. <laughs> yep. Has no label on it. So we'll just call it the mystery bag. And a little bit of green stuff, natural leaf litter. I'll open it up so you can see. Just basically looks like dried leaves. Mm -hmm. So I use a school glue, or some people call it white glue, to put my put the basing stuff on. And I did a mixture beforehand of the brown battleground and the Mr. sometimes Black. you put gray tufts on there too are we putting any tufts on that one or anything um no i haven't been putting in i i'm not putting any tufts on these ones I okay think. so but there's the mixture so i'm gonna go ahead and put some glue put glue everything up okay so i finished gluing the rocks and the leaf litter on the bases and the next Next two things I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the rims with German Sea Black Brown from Vallejo because it's a nice, nice dark brown color. makes everything look nice and finished and polished. And then I'm going to do, as you can see on the card here, there's some blood spatter. So I'm going to do some blood spatter. Similar with, to how I did my one. Yeah, similar to, to how Mike did with the, with the Cthulhu with the Blood for the Blood God paint. And then once that's done, we'll have everything ready and showcase what they look like when they're done. Yep. So I finished doing the effects paints and painting the rim. And now these guys are all done. So you see some of them have just a little bit of the blood spray. And then some of them have a little bit more of the blood spray. I tried to get some on the blade too. I'm new to the blood spraying, so it's not perfect, but it's a work in progress. But I think they came out pretty good. So I'm happy with them. So now we'll just set up and show you what they look like when they're all done. Yep. So this is what Raven and I finished up. I got Kasulu all done with his gore. I have the Tamiya color, the semi-gloss I did on it. So it looks kind of shiny like it came out of the water a bit. Yeah, the varnish. The varnish, yeah. Yep. So yeah, I did Kasulu and you did Margot's Chief Attendant. Yep. We got everything on there with the blood effects and everything. You can see them all together. Yep. Very cool. So we hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if you did, please comment, let us know, and we can keep doing more painting videos. Yeah, if there's any models from Bloodborne or uh, Zombie Side you want to see or... Even God tier war bands and stuff too, right? We yep. Have. Let us know. And and if you were wondering about any of the paints we use, let us know too. We can write the specific exact name in the comments. Just to if if you want. So thanks for coming out and thanks for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. See ya.